Welcome to the Sunday Mass with Bishop David Ricken from St. Francis Xavier Cathedral in Green Bay. We are the church sent forth to bring hope, healing, mercy, and love to all God's people. Individuals and families continue to return to church every Sunday, yet there are those who for various reasons cannot be present in our parishes at this time. We are here for you. We invite you to pray with us from wherever you are. Good morning and welcome to the TV Sunday Mass. This is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us pause and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, to, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me, and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one because of his faith shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
come, let us ring our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the desert, when your forebearers put me to the test, when they tried me though they saw my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, Come here immediately and take your place at table. Would he not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat. Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel reading, we hear that reference to strong and bold prayer. 
It talks about faith the size of a mustard seed. You would say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. I want to help you call to mind a wonderful miracle that happened here in this diocese in 1871. It's called the miracle of the Peshtigo fire, which was a horrendous fire, much bigger than the Chicago fire at the same time. Many thousands of lives were lost. Everything was destroyed except for a little emerald isle in the midst of this charred land. And that was where Our Lady of Good Help Shrine stood. And Adele Bryce was there praying. Many of the farmers who had lost their farms came to the shrine to pray to the Blessed Mother. They took a statue of the Blessed Mother and went around the perimeter of the shrine's property. And as they did so, the rain started to come. The rain stopped that hellacious fire and they were saved. So many were lost, but they were saved. Can you imagine Sister Adele and those farmers in that area standing up boldly to that fire and asking the Blessed Mother to quench it, to snuff it out? And that's exactly what happened. My brothers and sisters, maybe sometimes we're too timid in our prayers. We ask, if you would, Lord, please. But as a great writer, a mystic says, that is the force of prayer, believing prayer, and having steadfast faith that it will be answered because the asker believes in three things. One, that God is infinitely good. Number two, that God is infinitely powerful. And number three, what he says is the truth. Now, if you and I start praying like that, it'll make a transformation in our prayer life and in all of our lives. This mystic goes on, people's prayers will be answered if they have unwavering faith that if they pray with humility and trust, as the second reading was talking about today, they will receive either what they are seeking for or something even better than what they have been asking for. Now, I want you to think about this. Am I a timid prayer? Or am I, I'm a, am I a man or woman or a boy or girl, a bold prayer? That when I pray for something, I know God wants me to ask his help in, and I believe in him, and I trust him. I know he's all powerful. I know he's all good. Why would he want anything else for me than the very fulfillment of that prayer? When you pray powerfully, prayers are answered much more swiftly oftentimes, and even better than we ask for. Isn't our God wonderful? He sends us the Blessed Mother and all the saints to help us, to encourage us, to give us good example, and encourage us to be bold in our prayer and to follow through by being men and women and boys and girls of virtue and faith. I ask you now to pray with me the beautiful Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Almighty Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now the universal prayer. Placing our needs in the hands of the Lord, let us lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our church and our mission to live as faithful disciples, may the Lord strengthen us in this holy work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, May the Lord impart upon them a spirit of wisdom, courage, and civility to work for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the faithful of the Diocese of Green Bay, may the grace of this sacrament transform us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from Hurricanes Ian and Fiona and all other natural disasters, may God comfort them, give them strength and perseverance, and open the hearts of many to assist them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Ricken's October intention, for all expectant mothers, that they may be aided by loved ones and their community to care for and protect the life they bear in their womb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, hear our prayers this day and answer them according to your will. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the whole company of angels and the saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink it, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, from this altar, from the Holy Eucharist, and from our hearts, let us extend the gift of God's peace to the entire world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Take away the sins of the world, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in reciting the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you and your families and your parishes, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Thanks for praying with us today. A special thanks goes to the Bergstrom Automotive family and to the Bishops of Peel for supporting this broadcast. May God bless you. Remember, God loves you, the church loves you, and so do I.